Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Sciences. Video 20, it's on fishing. These are the famous Sri Lankan stilt fishermen trying to eke out a living catching fish in the surf. They make most of their money, actually, on tourists, but this is commercial fishing. We've been able to catch so many fish that overfishing is a problem around our planet. What is fishing? It's not only capture of fish, but seafood, so lobsters and oysters and even kelp fall into this idea of fishing. What techniques? Well, first of all, where were fishing is important. Wild catch is when we're catching it in the wild, in the oceans. Techniques we use are hand and spear. Angling is when you use a hook. We can also use nets and we've been using trapping. We've been doing this for thousands of years, but not on the commercial scale that we're doing so now. And that's led to this problem of overfishing. The classic example is the collapse of the North Atlantic cod fishing. Um, the problem here is tragedy of the commons. Who owns that area? Nobody. So countries are all fishing it and as a result we get this overfishing. Some people have put forward this idea of aquaculture or farming fish and that's a big portion of the fish that we eat now. It's got pros. We're not doing wild catch but there are definitely some cons that go along with that. And so the key point with any type of fishing is sustainable yield. How many fish can we catch? Should we keep that population healthy? And regulations including quotas are going to be a big part of the solution. So we've been fishing for hundreds of years, thousands of years. They've been catching by hand abalone and oysters. We can spear fish. We can use nets. We can do angling where we're using a hook. And we can use trapping. So we've done that all along, but now we're capturing fish at a much larger rate. So this would be fishing with giant nets in Alaska. And these are these giant crab traps or crab pots in Alaska. We can capture huge amounts of seafood. And as a result, we are dealing with the tragedy of the commons. If I I'm fishing this small pond, I'm okay if I if I capture just a few fish and return some of those fish. But if somebody fishes next to me and then everybody fishes next to me, eventually that pond doesn't have a lot of fish in it. And we see the same thing in the ocean. And so the classic example is the collapse of the North Atlantic cod stock. And so this is the amount of cod that we were catching, but in the 60s and 70s we were catching so much cod that it eventually collapsed. And we had to have a moratorium where you're not fishing cod in the hopes that they'll come back. Now if we look at the amount of fish that the Canadians were catching in the 1970s, we see that it really didn't increase that much. What's the big change? It's other countries that are fishing for the cod. What countries? It's Russia, Germany, France, it's the US. And so what happened at that time is we had such an increase in the amount of fishing that that whole fisheries collapsed in on itself to the point where they weren't catching any cod and they're going to have to wait for that to come back again. So what's important then when we're maintaining a fishery like this is the sustainable yield. So if you think of fish like any population that grows, a population is going to do exponential growth and then logistic growth. It's eventually going to hit what's called the carrying capacity. Now if we look at different levels along this graph, at the beginning what's the growth rate well, you can see it's not increasing very much, so it would pretty much have no growth rate. As we go along this curve, at this point, you can see that the population is increasing dramatically, so there's going to be a huge growth rate here, but once we hit that carrying capacity, it levels off again. And so I'm going to take this picture, put it to the side, and I'm going to show you a different graph. Now I'm going to take the population, which is right here, I'm going to move it down to the bottom, and then we're going to graph that growth rate. And so again, it's low growth rate at the beginning and the end, and high growth rate in the middle and so we get a graph that looks like this. It's not very interesting but it's incredibly powerful. What we can do is use a graph like this to figure out that sustainable yield. How many fish can we catch? And so let's say for example that at this population right here we decide to catch fish at a specific rate right here. So that's matching the growth rate. And so what's going to happen to the population over time? It's going to stay right there. If you ever catch fish at the same rate at which this red line exists, it will stay right there. The population will never change. Let's say we catch less fish than that at a lower growth rate. What's going to happen? Well, this amount right here that we didn't catch will add to the population. And so what's going to happen to the population? It's going to move to the right. We're going to have an increase in the amount of fish in that area. Now likewise, if we were to catch more than that amount, so if we're catching more fish than the rate, what's going to happen? It's going to move to the left. And so with a curve like this, anything below the curve is going to move to the right, and anything above the curve is going to move to the left. And so we can figure out what's the population, what's the growth rate, and we can figure out how many fish to catch. Now why did I color all these ones down here green? It's because anything below this line up here is going to keep a sustained yield of the fish. We might move down to the left and then move up to the right again. And so what's the take-home 
message, you want to be fishing when you have a high population and you never want to exceed that rate or that line. And so let's look what's got happened to the planet. So if we look at global total fish harvest from 1950 to 2010, you can see that it's actually leveled off. So are we going to have problems into the future? For sure. A lot of different uh, a lot of different fish stocks are seeing this overfishing. But if we look at the total amount of seafood that we're harvesting, it continues to grow up. Well, what's the difference? It's the arrival of aquaculture. It's the farming of these fish. Farming of salmon, or right here they're farming catfish. So you can think of, of, of aquaculture like just a, a farm for your fish. It's just like having a bunch of cattle in an area. And so what are some good parts of this? We can have a greater density of fish and we don't have to rely on this wild catch. Now what are some of the cons of this, however? It's just like having a bunch of cattle in an enclosed area. You're gonna have a problem with waste. We're gonna have to control algae, for example. We'll use herbicides, maybe antibiotics. We could have a mixing of the native and non-native fishes. A lot of people are putting forward GM fish, this idea that you can make salmon that can grow much faster, but once they're escaped, they're going to compete with the biodiversity of the fish, and so it has all of these problems. The key part is to remember this whole idea of sustainability. And so if we understand this curve, if we're fishing up here, what you can do through regulations is we could figure out what's the total allowable catch? How many fish could we catch? So let's figure that out. This is the amount of fish. And then what you can do is you can use quotas. We can use individual transferable quotas. So each little fisherman or each little fishery gets a set amount of fish that they can catch. It's almost like staking a claim in mining. You can then start to invest in that fishing. And so did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and fill in all the blanks. Again, techniques wild catch could be hand spear, angling, this would be netting or trapping. We can also do what's called aquaculture where we're farming that fishing. Tragedy of the commons, the key point or the solution is a sustainable yield. And then again, the, the best way to regulate fishing is to figure out how many total can we catch and then give individual fishermen quotas of the amount that they can catch. So that's fishing and I hope that was helpful.